Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today back to work on the Lucas Horizontal Boring Mill, which has been an ongoing project in the shop, something kind of a little bit on the side, but I do have a job coming up uh, that's gonna require this machine, so I need to get things uh, finished up on this where I can at least use it. Uh, we have been working on getting it cleaned up and repainted. Uh, last time you guys probably saw this in the video, none of this had been repainted. We got us all this stripped down, got paint on it, looks great. It's all cosmetic, but uh, there is one little thing we mechanical we need to do in here uh, to get this thing going. So on this, there are two little levers uh, that fit right up here. This is one of them. And uh, there's a, a pin that it just kind of drops down over. There's a piece in the back. You basically slide these left and right and it changes some adjustments in here. I, I'm not 100% sure right now. I think this has to do with the um, the, feed rate of the quill going out, if I remember right. Don't hold me to it. I think that's right. But anyway, there's a couple of different settings that we can do in there uh, to adjust some uh, gears back here in the back. So the problem is, is that when I took these off, uh, there is a little pin that goes up underneath that. It's a little spring-loaded pin that goes into a detent and basically holds this thing in one position or the other. And one of these pins was missing on the machine. They're identical, but I wanna go ahead and get this thing fixed right. So we're gonna make a new pin and get this thing on here. And that's gonna be today's project. So I'll show you what we got. We'll get over on the lathe. Shouldn't be too hard to knock this out and uh, do a little lathe work. So you kind of see what's going on. This is the lever. Uh, there's a pin right here, a little bronze piece that slides, that slides on. I'll show you that when we put it back together. The other lever is pretty much very similar to this. They're not identical, but they operate kind of the same way. If you look, there's two little holes back here. And this little spring-loaded detent uh, just kind of goes back and forth so that whenever you're in one position or the other, it will kind of lock in there and it will let you easily move it to the other one, but that little pin holds it in place. And again, that is the part that we need to make. Uh, I'm missing one. I have uh, ordered some springs that should work with this thing uh, so we can get this replaced. So there we go. You can kind of see how this works. Let's head over to the lathe and uh, make that part. Give you guys a close up look at the part before we start making it. Uh, so, Got a shaft back here. This is uh, about 430 thousandths. Uh, this piece up here, uh, 681, and just kind of goes down to a point. And anyway, we you can kind of see where we're going. We'll find the measurements now. I was looking for a piece of stock to make this out of, and uh, trying to. I went over to my little scrap pile, and I found this. And uh, I said, wow, yeah, that's where we're going to make it from. So we've already got a pin. And again, that was 430. This is 490. That's uh, 680 something, three quarter. So uh, we got plenty of material uh, to knock this thing out. But I'll tell you, I really like the idea of using this. Number one, I'm, I'm salvaging a piece of scrap metal and not having to spend money on something. But uh, I happen to know for a fact that this piece of metal actually came off of that horizontal boring mill. This was another little indexing pin in another part. I think I did a video on this a long time ago when I first got that machine. We had to remake this part because the end was just kind of messed up down here. It actually been brazed up and returned, but it had wasn't really working like it should. So we made a new one. So this is very likely the exact same steel that this is made out of. And uh, that piece of metal is, uh, again, it's, it's over 100 years old because uh, the machines, I think, was made in 1918, if I remember right. And I'm sure that both of these are original to it. So anyway, we're going to use a piece of metal that came off of that machine to repair the machine with. I just like that idea. So let's go to the lathe and see if we can knock this out. It should be pretty straightforward. All right, we are over on the lathe. Our... Um, Piece needs to stick out inch and a half. So uh, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, I'm gonna kind of true that shoulder up in there because this one doesn't come square. And then we'll measure off of that and just use a parting tool to cut that off. So we'll start there. Just kind of come in here. I just wanted to get a shoulder there that was square. I'm going to 
I'll swap tools, put a parting tool on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna, I want this part to be an inch and a half long. So I'm just gonna put that up against the edge. I'll zero out my digital readout and I can just read on there one and a half inches, which is right there. And that's measuring from the inside of that shoulder to the inside of what will be the length. So that should get our length where it needs to be. And we'll just cut it off. Got a little flex in there, but I think it'll be all right. We'll just go slow. going to clean this up just a little bit to get a good measurement on the diameter. Touch off here and just take about 10 thousandths off of that. I just want to try to clean that up so I can get a, uh, a measurement to start working off of. Get a true measurement. see where we're at. So we are at 485. I'm gonna put that in my digital readout. 0 0.485. And we are going to 435 roughly. So uh, go about 50 thousand to take off. I'm just gonna do 20 thousandths. We'll take a couple of passes and take our time. All right, I just dialed in to 435 thousandths on the uh, digital readout. This uh, measurement's really not that critical. We just need for that spring to fit up over it. Uh, but we're gonna try to get it as close to the original as we can. This should do it though. this in. Got a little bit of a area on the end there that wasn't exactly smooth. Come in here and uh, chamfer this in. Break that edge. Okay. And we'll go ahead and hit this one as well. Taking some on that outside diameter, so I'm gonna do it fairly heavy. Now let me get my spring and make sure it's gonna fit. And look at that, it's just what we need. All right, let's flip it over, we'll get the other side done. All right, this front edge needs to be about an inch long. I'm gonna go ahead and just like we did before, we're gonna part that off. And once again, this isn't really a high precision piece here. I'm just gonna kind of come in here and line my, I'm gonna stick my head in here for a second. I'm just trying to get the back of this cutter more or less flush with that edge. And again, I'm gonna zero my digital readout and we'll come out one inch, which is right there and we're gonna part it off. I'm not sure if I got that last little clip of what I did here, but you can see we turned the outside diameter down to size. I then came in and turned this down to that shoulder now I'm gonna come in here and cut the radius, or that not radius, but the angle on this front side to make that cone shape. We'll set our compound. I'm gonna go measure that right now. 
uh, but we're getting real close to having this knocked out. So measure that angle, it's a 60 degree included angle. So I've got my compound set on 30 degrees, which is half of that, and that should carve that on out. So um, we'll just be back here in the back and basically just, we'll start at the front and just work our way back until we just get back into that, that angle there. The front is kind of rounded over. I'll probably just do that with a file. Uh, so let's get at it. So we just come in here. Tighten that down. Uh, working our way in there so I'm feeding in a little bit on the straight in I'll come back out to the end I'll feed in just a little bit and we're just forming that angle that we need there doing it by hand here massaging it in there nicely. About one more pass maybe and we'll be about where we need to be on the back side. Take a little bit lighter pass this time. I don't want to overshoot it. One more. And I think I'm going to do another one. It should come out to a nice point there in the front if my math was right. All right I think we're going to call good enough there. And let me grab a file. Like I said, I want to just round that over on the nose. Notice how that nose is a little bit rounded over. Some of that's probably wear, but it doesn't go down to a sharp point in that bottom. So I just got a file here, and I'm just going to kind of round that over. And that looks very similar there. was a little bit more pointed but I think there's some wear on that so we're just gonna leave it like it is and I think we are done let's go put it on there's our original pull the springs off there's the new one I think they're gonna work just fine now one thing I am gonna do is I did get some new springs so I'm gonna put a new spring on here the only reason being is is that they're similar amounts of tension between them, but I just want them to both have the same feel. So uh, we'll just put a new spring on both of these and go install them. So uh, let's go put it on there and try them out. All right, let's see if we can uh, put this on. So if you look, there's two holes. The uh, pin goes in the front one on this one. This is the stud it'll ride on. And then there's a slot back here in that. And on the pin, we got a little uh, bar here that swivels. And we're gonna drop this down on. That will line up with the slot like such. And take a washer put on top there and there's our nut to tighten it up and we'll tighten that up and we'll see how that works and that little detent just kind of catches in those two holes and kind of positions it where it needs to be 
Do the same thing on this front one. So on this one, notice that the uh, pin is in the back. The detent pin is in the back. This is the one we made. Pin right here. There we go. Run that up top. And this one does the same thing. All right, I think we got these installed and uh, you see these basically just move back and forth and it switches some gears back there. I have to fire it up, get my gear to mesh. Notice right here, there's a little interlocking system. So, you know, it won't let you switch uh, this gear, the back one while this one's over, and this one, it will let you switch this one. Uh, so it, it basically keeps you from going into the wrong place with this thing. So, tell you what, let's fire it up. And we'll start the spindle. Here we go. But notice that changed my spindle speed. And it will only work in that position. And then I come over here and I go in the other way. And we got half speed or something lower speed. So that's what this is doing is just affecting the spindle speed. Looks like a high and a low, which we can adjust up here on the top. So pretty cool. And my clutch came out. But there we go. Got that knocked out. Well, there we go, guys. Another item checked off of my long, long list of things that needs to be done around here. Uh, this machine is coming along and hopefully going to have her back in service and I'll uh, be able to use her on the job coming up here real soon. And with that, guys, I think it's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications with new videos. Thumbs up. Greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you, thank you to everybody who uh, supports the channel through Patreon and other means. Uh, as always, greatly appreciated there as well. And with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.